the manager of the dairy section of a large supermarket supermarket took a random sample of 250 egg cartons and found that 40 cartons had at least one broken egg. Okay, so they looked at 250 egg cartons total and 40 of them had at least one broken egg. Uh, create a 90% confidence interval for the true proportion of egg cartons with at least one broken egg. Okay, so what percent, uh, given that sample data, what percent of the time when I go grocery shopping would I expect to see something with a broken egg in it? Okay, so first step, check assumptions. Uh, and so we're going to, it's it's safe to assume that the uh, egg cartons were randomly collected. Um, whether or not they said it, we're just going to make it, we have to at least make that statement that we thought about it and it makes sense that it was reasonable that they, um, it was random. Uh, then we need to check NP and N times 1 minus P. Uh, here's a quick question. Where did they get the, the 0.16? Let's kind of think about that for a second. Where did 0.16 show up? Okay, so what they did is they took the, the 40 that had at least one broken egg and they divided that into the 250. So the uh, P hat uh, is 0.16 in this case. Uh, so that's what that first bit is. Uh, so 250, so the 250 times 0.16. And again, we're just checking to make sure it's bigger than 10. It is. Uh, and it's not coincidence that it equals 40, by the way. Uh, and then I want 250 times uh, 1 minus 0.16. And that gives us 210. So in, in both cases, it's bigger than uh, 10. Okay. Uh, and then the last sort of assumption is, is it safe to assume that it's at least 2,500 uh, for the total population of egg cartons? And I think in a typical grocery store, uh, we can we can think that's that's reasonable amount of you know egg cartons that they might get in a week or something. Um, so that, anyways, that's a reasonable assumption. Uh, secondly, we want to set up our uh, calculations. So that's the p hat is 0.16 uh, z star, so 90% confidence level, so that's 1.645, uh, and then our sample size is 250. So we can set that all up in our formula, and we get uh, the confidence level is between uh, 12 and 19 percent, almost 20 percent. Uh, let me pull up in the calculator again and kind of remind you about that uh, screen I just showed you. Okay, so we're going to go to our stat test screen and again we're looking for one prop Z uh, interval. Okay, and they, add, they said there were 40 cartons, so I'm going to type a 40 in, add a 250, and I expect the confidence level is 90%, so just make sure it says 0.9. And then I hit calculate, and it does all the work for us um, to get the 12% and the 19.8%. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is interpret, put it in context. So uh, we are 90% confident that the true proportion of egg cartons with at least one broken egg is between 12.2% and 19.8%. Okay. Uh, do another one. Okay, uh, another Gallup poll is taken to measure the proportion of adults who would, who approve attempts to clone humans. Interesting. Uh, what sample size is necessary to be within 0 .04 of the true proportion of adults who approve of attempts to clone humans with a 95% confidence interval? Okay. So, uh, this time we're asked for a sample size. So we need to think about our formulas. What formula um, would we be able to use for this? And um, so this is another skill that we need to make sure we are aware of. Uh, so they, that plus or minus four represents the margin of error. And our, our formula there is, is missing some information. So we know if, if it's a 95% confidence interval, we know what Z star is for that. Uh, but we're, we're trying to estimate the population proportion 
So the question then is, well, how can I estimate it if I don't know it? Um, what are we going to do? And then n is, of course, what we're trying to solve for. Well, you want to think back to when, you, when you're dealing with proportions, um, what is sort of the worst case scenario that we could see? Okay, um, and it goes back to when we d dealt with standard deviation of a, uh, of a binomial, or the first time we looked at that, there was a certain p-value that ended up being the, the worst approximator. And so um, we're going to go through sort of if the probability of success is 0.1, then 1 minus p would be 0.9. So we multiply that together, we get this, this list of numbers. And hopefully what we're noticing is when we get up to 0.5, uh, 0.5 is going to be the largest of that uh, standard deviation. Remember, margin of errors is based on, in part, the st standard deviation. So for proportions, the worst possible proportion we could ever get is when the probability of success is 0.5. Um, so that has what's called the largest standard deviation. And again, that ties back to uh, in a binomial distribution, uh, when we looked at a probability of success of 0.5, that was the one that was the most normal. Okay, so when we go to type in our estimate, we're going to use the worst case scenario, which is 0.5. Because even if our population is better than that, I want the worst possible case scenario, so then I would want to uh, at least have that, that large a number in my sample size. Um, so, use a little algebra here, because uh, I want to try to solve for n. So I, take the 0.04, divide that by 1.96, uh, then I square that, and if you sort of use a cross product property, then you end up getting um, 600.25. Let me pull the calculator out and let's, uh, let's go through that, those steps together. Okay, so I'm staring at this, this second line right here. Uh, so we take 0.04, divide that by 1.96, Okay, we're going to get a decimal. Uh, then, so I'm staring at this thing, and I want to uh, get rid of the square root. So that means I'm going to square both sides. And that gives me another decimal. Uh, and so you got to think if I multiply across, so it's uh, n would equal 0.25 divided by this new decimal that I found. So if I take 0.25 and divide it by, and in my case I can just arrow up, um, that number, uh, that's where I get 600.25, essentially. Uh, since we're talking sample size, and I want to make sure that I get it l enough individuals to uh, make sure that I'm within 0.04 of whatever the, the estimate is, then I want to make sure that I've, worst case scenario, that I only have to talk to 601 individuals. So I want to round up, and any time we're asking about sample size, we round up uh, to estimate that calculation. So, uh, there.